polite, handsome, and single. I've never bothered. Don't go anywhere tonight. Move along. Alone in the dark. Legion's greetings, Hunter. You claim to possess evidence that implicates Lady Esmeralda in the murder of her husband. There now, she was stringing Farrell along. Ha! A pampered brat, that duke, just like she says. Barks worse than his bite, no doubt. He'll be gone from here the instant he can, but I'll still be here, steadfast and by milady's side. And what questions are those? My, what a strong and hand- The hunter returns! I hope you are here to shop rather than sleuth. So, what piece of irrefutable evidence are you about to present me with this time? Well, what do you want to know? You call to Ulgraf. He awaits your queries. With a simple nod, the rogue seems to say, Shoot! Ulgraf sighs and pulls parchment parts out of his pockets. He opts for the largest one he can find and sits down, pen in hand. When I was a kid, friends and I used to play source hunters. Neighbor's dog was the sorcerer. Good fun. One day, we saw strangers in the forest. They looked dodgy. Dark robes, big knives. Friends fled, but I followed them. They took a man into a cave, cut his throat, held him over a blue stone. Blood turned it into ruby. I warned the source hunters in the city, caught the cutthroats. Source hunters called me a hero. Bad guys were hung. I witnessed the hanging. Sorcerer spoke a spell before the trapdoor opened. I was mute, just like that. Always wanted to be a source hunter, but source hunters didn't want no mutiny order. Can't blame them. Too bad, though. Too bad. Walgraf frowns and signals you to hold on for an instant. He begins to write and gives you a scrap of paper. Not easy being mute. Can't talk and folks think you're slow in the head. No one ever gave me work, though I'm good with my hands. Was poor. Got hungry. Got thirsty, stole stuff, then got greedy, became a cat burglar. Told you, I'm good with my hands. Would have done honest work with them, given the chance, a long time ago. I ain't bitter about it, though. Like the rogue's life. Freedom. Well, unless the law gets you. Haven't yet. Too nimble. Too good. Born for adventure. The rogue smiles broadly and dramatically produces the quill in question. He holds it aloft for all to admire, then jots down the following words. Saw a wizard once in the village up north, Hunter's Edge. Wizard had nifty things, brooms that sweep by themselves, big star viewer in the garden. Went into his house by night, found quill by spell books. Kept it, never needed ink no more. Hands used to be black as chimney sweeps. Clean now, clean of ink that is, not of thievery. Man's got to eat after all.
Sorry, sir. You think that's funny, private? Sir, no, sir. Oh, what now? Whom would you have the Legion arrest? He already came clean and expressed his remorse. We should let this one slide. Right you are. Succumbing to a temporary temptation shouldn't be enough to land a man in jail, even if he technically committed a crime. Why bring up the subject of arresting someone if you don't dare go through with it? Damn waste of time, you! Oh, still not finished with that sorry matter? It was stolen? Gods, what a fool that Roberts is! Taking a bribe in beleaguered old Sicil. Ah, what was he going to do with that gold? Buy the largest kipper in the land? He has a lot to answer for. But not as much as the one that did the bribing in the first place. I guess your mission is pretty clear, isn't it? Off you go to find this munificent body snatcher. You dare stand here and accuse me of involvement in this sordid affair? You dare accuse a captain of the Legion? Get out! Out! Before I have my men erect a gallows and string up a sauce piñata! Ah, the sauce hunter. Oh, joy. What about it? Well, have you found any incriminating evidence? Like I said, the girl's known to be a flirt. But that sob of a feral doesn't have the metal to commit murder. And as far as I'm concerned, neither has she. Horse Hunter, welcome, welcome. What? I... I'd never. If you must know, I was merely checking up on Maxine, the mayor's cat. What a delight she is. The temperament of a tiger, the grace of a leopard, and the manners of a lady all rolled into one. Perfect puss, if ever there was one. By all means. Of course. I hope your investigation fares well. His body is gone? Replaced with that of a sheep? This is all very disconcerting, to say the least. Grave robbery reeks of necromancy. Could Jake have been involved with those that raise the dead? It seems too improbable to be true, but nevertheless, you're onto something, Hunter. Do follow the scent and see where it leads you. I myself have none, even though the rest of the town has already mentally tried. Now, it may well be established that she is, in fact, the guilty party. I'm not claiming that I'm certain she's innocent, but let's just say that if I really thought this murder case would be so very easily res- No talking to these scoundrels, criminals. Those who 
to embarrass a bridge troll. Get to shining recruits. Sorry, sir. You think that's funny, private? Sir, no, sir. Attention! About face! To what do I owe the repeated pleasure, Source Hunter? The world belongs to the young, they say, and Boris will live to take his peace. Thank you for your help in this matter. Sorry, but uh, there isn't much work for sailors in a house of medicine. Unless one of them happens to have a secret stash of healing stones. <laughs> Well, she certainly possesses a critical... I expect she'll be a very successful healer in her own right when the time comes. She is learning from the... Certainly, what would you like to know? The counselor, terrible loss. From what I can tell, it seems to be a simple case of jealousy turned violent. The affairs of his wife, Esmeralda, were hardly a secret, you know. Hello again. Terribly sorry, Source Hunter, but I seem to be fresh out of priceless relics for you to destroy. It is somewhere. Is that so? Well, I handled the corpse myself, indeed, but I hardly knew the man in life. I was shocked when Ahu asked me to come to the crime scene, but Theliron had taken ill, and the responsibility fell to me. I arrived at the inn, where the body lay just where it had fallen. The injuries were like nothing I'd ever seen. A single intricate laceration wove like lace around every inch of his skin. Neither a beginning nor an ending point were discernible. I examined the corpse and recorded what information I could. I personally delivered the corpse the short distance to the mortician's house. As far as I know, everything was, as far as a magical murder is concerned, quite normal. Ah, uh, that tone, soothing a corpse's troubled mind, can't have gotten far. She'll realize soon enough that her little party tricks hardly make her worthy of such grave responsibilities.
What? Oh, it's you! What news? No, no. All my clothes are in fine condition, thanks. I've been going to the same tailor for years. Jake? Murdered, you say? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Now I remember. Well, I'm sure the facts will prove me innocent. Keep investigating. You'll see for yourselves in time. Maxine? What in heaven's name are you? Oh, you mean the mongrel that's always skulking about the place. I spent months trying to teach that worthless hound how to fetch, and it sat through every lesson looking at me as if I were an idiot. Man's best friend, my eye. I've always been more fond of cats myself. Walgraf gives you a knowing look. He seems to think the mare is a few arrows short of a quiver. I hope there are no large predators around, or the mayor may find himself easily hunted. You call to Walgraf. He awaits your queries. With a simple nod, the rogue seems to say, Shoot! What would you like to discuss? Jake! Murdered? Oh yes, yes, now I recall. Indeed, most of the townsfolk are certain Jake's wife Esmeralda is responsible. As you can imagine, I've known Esmeralda for years. An all right bloke, apart from all this Esmeralda nonsense. The whole town knows the only goal of his business trips to Sicil is to spend a night or two at the King Crab Inn with Mrs. Counselor. Well, I... I do believe that's something your parents ought to have discussed with you lot. Ah, you see, oh, this is nonsense. I'm the mayor, for the seventh sake. I can't be bothered to chat all day about the birds and the bees when Sicil's under siege by orcs, undead, and cultists. Welcome back, Source Hunter. More business with the mayor, I imagine. Not in the mood for cheese. That excuse is more holes than a slice of this fine corbin there. Whatever happened to that troop of eager imbeciles we sent to the northern cave? Back, demon. Back or I'll... Well, what's this? 
Oh, Madara, you lummox. A thousand pardons, comrade. This old bear is edgier than a dodecahedron these days. I'll tell you, it sure does me good to set eyes on another of our order. From Academy West, aren't you? Give Captain more truce my regards next time you see him. You wouldn't. I trained up in Academy North, after all. We don't cross paths with you Westies all that often, but it's always a pleasure when we do. Madara's the name. Retired, or so the Order keeps trying to tell me, but never out of commission. My hand to your cause and my sword at your side. Defeated by Alistair the Great! Heaven's hey, Hornets! That's quite a story, comrade. And come to think of it, one that might concern you. See, I'm here on, well, let's call it a loan from a town to the north of here. Hunter's Edge by name. There's been an attack there, comrade. Orcs. Not your run-of-the-mill savages, either. But ones who've taken dark magic to new heights. What they want in Hunter's Edge, I can't say. But it's my responsibility to send them packing. Preferably with their horns in their suitcases, and a knee-knocking fear of ever crossing paths with a sauce hunter again. I came south seeking the Legion's help, only to find it tied here in Sicil. They don't have a spare soldier to send northward, and even in my finest form, I can't clear the place of that many orcs without backup. By the skin of my teeth, comrade. The savages were rounding up villagers when one of them activated a tripwire on our village wizard's property. Fortunately for me, that particular wizard has a penchant for things that go boom in the night. I managed to wrench free of my captor's grip and flee toward the forest. He pursued me for miles, but I'd lost him before I made it into the Sicil hinterlands. Well, comrade, I hadn't thought of it till you tapped my shoulder just now. But perhaps that's where you come in. I need a contingent I can trust if I'm to take back the town. And the way I see it, you could use reinforcements here in town. I've been scouting Sicil for some time now, and I believe I've sussed out sufficient intel to help solve the murder of the Counselor. With our minds and swords in tandem, we'll make short work of the perpetrator. Tell me, Alistair, have you ever had the fortune of challenging the fabled wizard? But it of seems Hunt? you've got all the help you need, haven't you? More's the pity. We could have beheaded a hundred source yetis in the name of the Order. And arcane secrets. More than I'd hoped, comrade. I don't know what in tarnation's gotten into the townsfolk here, but there's enough dark magic running roughshod to topple a small mountain. There's Mayor Cecil's doings for one, and the mysteries of our master Thaleron for another. And on top of it all, the feline menace is lurking at every hearth and shadow. Now don't get me wrong, I think the Mayor's a decent sort, even if he can't hear farther than the tip of his own nose. But from what I've heard whispered around the docks, the old guy's gotten himself mixed up in something not quite on this side of the law. I suspect an illegal sauce artifact or substance is at the root of it, but exactly what or who's given it to him, I can't say. And since I haven't technically been assigned to Sicil, I don't have the authority to interrogate him. Fella seems like a humble doctor, but I bet my sword he's dealing in something darker and splints and tonics. A loose-lipped fishmonger let slip that she'd seen our good doctor scale the city wall on two separate occasions, well past midnight each time. What business could he have among the undead? Hardly the habit of an innocent healer, I'd say. You mean you don't already know, comrade? Their kind can see in the dark. It ain't natural. Ah, pointless chatter with strangers does so thrill me. How did you know? Please continue interrupting my drink if you'd be so kind. How curious of you to show interest in a lonesome stranger at the bar. 
Let me answer by saying that who I am is hardly any of your business. And anyone with an ounce of tact would have known that already. So you've wrangled a position in the Fabulous Five, have you? I'm fairly brimming with enthusiasm at the prospect of calling you a partner. You'd better leave me undisturbed, or my emotions might just bubble over. You've been sent after Ahu's insane robot, I understand. Do you imagine that while you're busy being crushed by that abomination, I'll manage to get through a whole drink, distraction-free? Hearty welcome to the King Crab Inn, and a pleasure to have you. You look like you could use a round or three, so what'll it be? Have a seat and stay a while. The name's Ivad. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I've been offering the weary travellers of Sicil drink and rest for nearly two decades now, but the King Crab's older than that by a long shot. All you see before you is the manifestation of my great grandpappy Horatius Dunganess's noble vision. Beer and naps for everyone. No questions asked. Well, between you and me, things have been rather slow since the, uh, incident. But with spirits high and liquor flowing like it is tonight, it seems a crab may just come out of that binge. Pfft. Mind if we keep our voices down over that sensitive subject? Death and dark magic ain't exactly great for business, you know. That room where it happened, it was rented to a certain woman. Though I regret to say, I can't say exactly who. This inn isn't in the business of asking many questions, if you know what I mean. She came heavily cloaked, but paid the full sum in advance. I was used to such transactions after many similar concerning a, a certain Esmeralda. Figured this were just more at same. I saw one other figure go into the room that night. Someone tall, built broad like a man, but shrouded the same as she. Again, standard practice for Mrs. Councillor and her visitors. I was startled awake by a horrendous hubbub shortly after midnight. I jumped up and grabbed me grandpappy's machete, bleary-eyed and awash in fright. By the time I burst into that room, it was horribly silent. There was only Jake on the floor, dead, surrounded by what may as well have been a battlefield. Whoever done it has escaped through the window. But I saw nearly a saw when I looked out. You can bet I hightailed it to the Legion barracks faster than a jackrabbit after that. Councillor Jake, that poor man. I knew too much about his affairs, you know. Never figured it my business to say anything, but after all that's happened, I wonder if that weren't a grave mistake. Esmeralda's longest standing lover has the audacity to remain lodged at this very inn, you know. He's called the Duke of Ferrell, a high title for a low man. If you haven't yet asked him about Esmeralda, I'd recommend it. Three hopeless sailors. Truly wish I could help you, but I'm barely keeping afloat as it is.
So that item interests you, yes? I can let you have it for a very reasonable price indeed. The hunter returns. I hope you are here to shop rather than sleuth. So, what piece of irrefutable evidence are you about to present me with this time? Starstone? I've never heard of... Do you mean to imply he collected something dangerous? Something that may have gotten... Assure me, dear Septimus, that you haven't been fighting those awful orcs. I can't bear to imagine something would happen to you. Oh, but don't you worry, my lady. We legionnaires are highly trained soldiers who fear neither orc nor demon. Oh, but what if you were to be ambushed, caught unawares? Oh, catch me, for I might faint. So tell me, Septimus, would your wife or sweetheart be compensated by the Legion should tragedy befall you on the battlefield? I... I suppose so, lady. But seeing that I'm neither married, engaged, nor attached in any way, I've never bothered to inquire. Polite, handsome, and single. Don't go anywhere tonight, Legionnaire. I'd be afraid alone in the dark. None of that you hear. Move along. Oh, cruel fortune. Still thinking about exploring the beach? You're free to go, though we Legionnaires are under strict orders never to abandon our posts, so we won't be able to back... You don't look like you're quite ready to head up. I certainly hope you know what you're doing. The Sicilians retreated from this battle, but what about the Orcs? 
Either they've taken to the sea or set up an encampment in yonder caves. Keep your weapon at the ready. After no fancy stone, I just want to bury these bodies the traditional way. It's the least I could do for my dear brother Oggy. <laughs> oh, he was such a dear lad he was. We wanted to see the world, but we saw next to nothing before he was called to serve the old mother in the afterlife. In our village, oh, poor Oggy will never see her again. But tradition goes that a warrior should be buried with his best armor so he can defend himself in the afterlife. There weren't so many spoiled after the battle, but I managed to give old Oggy the best set. A proud send off for a proud soldier. This orc is obviously bereft. We may risk missing out on that armor set, but we've got to leave him be. Agreed. Robbing the dead is bad enough, but to do it while a mourner looks on is simply vile. Don't think I didn't see that twinkle in your eye when I spoke of the armor, small bones. But I thank you for leaving my brother to rest in peace. Don't play down with me, small bones. You know as well as I that your little shea won't be rid of us orcs till my kind gets that fancy schmancy bloodstone you got in yonder cove. In our own town, we honoured the dead by decorating their graves with whatever materials we have. In this case, it's wood. They look rather fetching, don't they? Or keep me proud. We should be careful not to accidentally disturb any graves. <laughs> we made a promise to an orc, after all. Yes, it's true. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> <laughs> I've spotted something. <laughs> Watch out! It isn't safe here. Woolgraph draws your attention and points out several inconspicuous little elevations in the sand. Hidden explosives?
Wallgraf spotted something. Hello! What have we here? An adventurer, I judge, by the world-weary look of your weapon. And a noble, by the wonderfully deep pockets clipped to your belt. What luck! What luck! Charla is my name, good friend. I came to this second life some time ago. Some years? Years, it must be. Or perhaps, perhaps not. In any case, it has been time well spent hunting out magnificent goods and selling them to interested parties. So many wonderful artifacts I've found, so many precious relics I'd be so happy to rehome to a trusted buyer. Have a look by all means. You'll find every make and kind of impressive accessories, but you'll also find certain very rare relics too. You look like just the sort of self-starter to appreciate what I mean. Weapons, four of them, that the intrepid adventurer can improve and upgrade as he travels if he finds the right pieces. See them? See them? Judge for yourself. No bone off my nose, Chasm, in any case. Have a look through my wares if you'd like to find something already wiped clean of orc ooze. My prices won't disappoint. Wallgraf spotted something.
Demon's breath, I've been paralyzed! These footprints are enormous. Watch out. Orcs that large think with their clubs, not their heads. Thank you. 
slimy, reeking, rotting sea garbage. Oh, careful now. Never know when those green beasts. Salutations! Source hunters, I see. I'm this is a storing house for Legion supplies. Perhaps the most important building in the realm, by my and others. That old spoil spot Horatius can gripe all he wants. I won't let him affect my disposition, no sir. Reeks of orc stench. You've caused enough distractions, I think. Well, a source hunter. About time the council took us seriously. Maybe you can start with the two idiots hiding their pet orc here. Loves me. An orc in love. Ha! When this little charm fades, she'll liberate the flesh from our faces. Oh. Come now. <laughs> enough doom and gloom. Cast. Ah, who better than a proven orc crusher to convince my dumbbell of a friend here that orcs are predators, not pets? Enough of that. I know how dangerous an orc can be, but this one has been reformed. Anyone can see that she's completely docile, but my prejudiced friend here still wants to kill her. Maybe before the great orc raid we had time to indulge Ninius's idiotic obsessions, but now we're needed at our posts. I can hardly believe I've been wasting time protecting an orc when I should be running them through. Excuse my friend's violent outbursts. He hasn't enjoyed a woman's touch in quite some time now. It makes him a bit... edgy. Your woman's touch is less of a loving caress and more of a claw shanked brutally through the throat. I'll take my chances as a bachelor, thanks. My friend here and I were patrolling outside the city walls, when who did I see creeping along the shore but this lovely orcish lady? For a brief second, as, well, as long as eternity, we locked eyes. Perhaps, confused by the butterflies in her stomach, she sprang up and began running, claws bared towards Marius. Fortunately for him, I had the presence of mind to ignore my sword and instead adroitly fling my pouch of trinkets towards her. A vial of love potion shattered over her head, and when she turned to face me, she became instantly enamoured. I'm sure she must have been compelled to join the Orcish army under some kind of duress. A lady with such a sweetly savage manner would never willingly join up with those vicious marauders. Ha! I can assure you there wasn't a hint of sweetness in those murderous eyes when she lunged at my throat. She may be confined here for now, but who's telling when she'll escape and who she'll rip to shreds? Ah, I've always had an amateur interest in all things alchemical. When I read in an esteemed periodical from the Wizards of Youthful Gore about an amazing opportunity that could change my life, I had to act fast or lose the once-in-a-lifetime deal. I sent away for the world-famous love potion, available for a limited time only, and it has worked exactly as promised. You see what a fool my friend has been, spending all his cash on snake oil and bringing a temporarily tranquilized monster into our midst to boot. What kind of monster would lie in a published advertisement? I'm sure the effects of the potion will be everlasting, as printed. You see? He'd believe it was noon at midnight if he read it on a printed pamphlet. Please tell me you can reason with him, or ditch reason and use your sword to shave him from his murderous darling.
Let her live. If that potion were truly worthless, it wouldn't have been able to charm her in the first place. In this docile state, she may prove to be a source of valuable information. One day, Moira. One day. You're right. The information she provides could well turn the tides here in Sicil. Bravo! I trust not only the potion, but my scaly sweetheart in and of herself. You're going to regret this. We're all going to regret this. <laughs> well, a sauce hunter. <laughs> You've caused enough distraction. Nothing like the 